I suppose we have an instance of cancel culture, yuck, happening on both the left and the right here. And we're going to see the difference between the two, okay? Because you have some fucking smooth-brained morons out there saying that this is a, oh, I thought the right was so against cancel culture. <laughs> Let me huff my farts. No, you have Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia that's very complicated. He's in a very tenuous situation, saying that he will not vote to confirm President Biden's pick to be Office of Management and Budget Director near a Tandon. Now, like I said in the beginning there, there's some smooth brains out there that are, no, oh, this is just uh, cancel culture at the highest level. No, it's really not. Because at least in this instance, there are receipts. Okay, let's go through this and then we're going to circle back around because we're talking about Democrats. Of course, Jen Psaki has to make an appearance to what actual cancel culture is all about. We got to figure out a better term for that because that's just not an appropriate descriptor of ruining somebody's career prospects and endangering their families, both of which we'll get to after this one, because this is just denying somebody for a position that they're not qualified for and would be, according to Joe Manchin, vitriolic for the position. One Republican would have to back Tandon to compensate for Joe Manchin's no vote, which seems unlikely. I don't know why not. Citing Tandon's past statements and tweets as a concern, oh, cause for concern, Manchin explained his expected vote. I have carefully reviewed near Tandon's public statements and tweets that were personally directed towards my colleagues on both sides of the aisle from Senator Sanders to Senator McConnell and others. Okay, I'm starting to lose faith in jo uh, Joe Manchin because if you're going to attack Bernie Sanders and Mitch McConnell, I do not detect anything objectionable about that. I believe her overtly partisan statements will have a toxic and detrimental impact impact on the working relationship between members of Congress and next director of Office of Management and Budget. For this reason, I cannot support her nomination. As I have said before, we must take meaningful steps to end the political division and dysfunction that pervades our politics at this grave crisis. It is important than ever it is more important than ever that we chart a new bipartisan course that helps address the many serious challenges facing our nation. Very wordy statement there, Joe. And this is just for being Secretary of Office of Management and Budget. So, so trying to make this molehill into a mountain, I see. In the past, Tandon has called Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell Voldemort Woo! and has battled Bernie Sanders and his supporters online. Well, that's the only place that they exist. Sanders' vote on Tandon w er, was also being monitored as a potential no during her confirmation hearing. The Vermont Senator asked, some of the most pointed questions of Tandon about the social media commentary she has had directed at his supporters. There were vicious attacks made against progressives because who I have worked with, me personally, can you reflect a little bit about some of your decisions and some of your personal statements you have made in the recent years? She'll be making those statements as soon as you can address one of your supporters is shooting Steve Scalise. Tannen apologized and told senators at the hearing that she had deleted some of her tweets. Oh, okay, good. Well, it's all, it's all made up for then. And promised that she would take a radically different approach if she is confirmed, which for all intents and purpose, purposes, she will be, okay? Because yes, every position in the government is important, some more important than others. And here's some of the background on her tweets because realistically, we didn't get anything from that fucking article. Tendon recently deleted more than a thousand of her insult-laden tweets that attacked GOP senators, but also trashed the 2016 presidential bid as Russia's choice against party favorite Hillary Clinton. I'm very disturbed about your personal comments. Yes, that sentiment was also echoed by Louisiana Senator John Kennedy. I mean, you called Senator Sanders everything but an ignorant slut. Interesting. That's just a turn of phrase for John Kennedy. It's nothing really to it, but she took it very personally with, I want the record, I want the record to show that I did not call Sanders an ignorant slut. Well, he didn't say that you would. You should probably listen to the entire statement, dummy. So yeah, all this is just a fucking show trial. Oh, okay, you wrote that Susan Collins is the worst. Well, she is, so I, thought, I hope that she gets appointed to this position just because uh, she's really kind of telling it like it is because she's called out Bernie Sanders, Mitch McConnell, and Susan Collins, so I, I don't have any problem with her so all of those idiots saying that this is mm, a cancel culture oh you're just making sure that she doesn't get positioned because she's gonna be the first woman of color to the position you're harming progress fucking spare me so you'd have that portion believe that not letting somebody take a cushy job or even just any job let, let's just say that 
let's just say somebody's hiring you for a job. You're in for an interview and maybe you're outside walking around. You show up early for the interview and the interviewer is inside waiting around. You have some spare time. You're outside talking on your phone and maybe you drop an F-bomb. Maybe you say something a little bit off color. And it's overheard by the secretary. The secretary goes in and tells the interviewer, about that and you're asked to ask you're asked to answer for your comments that you just made prior to the interview now if somebody's going to bring that up for a position in an interview is that a place that you want to work long term probably not but would it be a big deal for a good job that you'd like probably not either but that's the standard that the left wants everybody to adhere to Meanwhile, with the other hand, they'll just go ahead and say, oh, uh, all of that other stuff is not cancel culture whatsoever. Gina Carano, no, that's not that. Uh, my private business has the opportunity to hire or fire anybody that they want at any whim, not understanding contract law or anything of the sort, but they're all experts because they have Twitter accounts. That's cool. How about Michael Vanderveen? Okay, having to send his kids to a secret location, hire armed guards, having his law firm attacked. We covered that, but the new revelations coming out about this. Trump star defense attorney Michael Vanderveen expanded on reports that his home was attacked during an appearance on Newsmax TV on February 15th following his victory on Saturday, the former president for his second two-time, two-time, two-time impeachment trial victory. Speaking to Newsmax anchor Rob Schmidt, Vanderveen said he was forced to send his children away for protection. We had a lot more then that happened to our home. We're doing fine. I moved my children to a secretive location. We've hired armed guards to protect our place of living and working, and we're doing fine. My family understands, and my law firm understands that we fight on the right on the side of right. Trump lawyer shed light on the shocking incident that involved his family. My home was attacked. I'd rather not go into it because it would encourage other people to do it more. I haven't seen that happen every fucking occasion. But, you know, I've had nearly 100 death threats. He further stressed that he was neither a controversial guy nor a, politi or nor a political person. Yes, Trader was spray-painted in front of his asphalt driveway. And that's total fucking AIDS. Hopefully he gets to the bottom of that. Because he is a lawyer, a personal defense lawyer. And anybody who is making credible threats against he or his family need to be brought up on charges and they, they need to be tried to the fullest extent of the law. I don't think that's really off base, but in the leftist sphere, they'll find a way to justify that because orange man bad. And another instance of cancel culture. How about David Schoen? You guys remember? Oh, he's a funny guy. He covered his head. Not realizing that his last name is fucking Schoen. Didn't you think he was a Jew? Duh. I was listening to an interview from him earlier today, and normally he wears a yarmulke, but he found that it might be swaying some of the senators at the time, and he didn't want to bring any sort of undue prejudice to any of the lawyers, so he decided to leave it at home, but then wanting to adhere to his traditions and his customs, hence why he missed out on everything after 5 p.m. on Friday and the final day of the proceedings. He had to adhere to the Sabbath, and that is definitely within his First Amendment right. And Vanderveen had everything on lockdown anyways. But no, we covered that when it happened too, when he started covering his head when he was drinking because, lol, it's fine to be anti-Semitic when you're on the left. Yeah, but now it gets worse for him. Trump's impeachment trial lawyer David Schoen claims he has been canceled by law school after they rescinded an offer for him to teach when they learned he was representing the former president. Yep, and here's the difference, okay? Schoen claimed he was in talks with an unidentified law school about teaching a class this coming fall. He didn't have a written agreement with them, but he had a handshake agreement where it's like, this is going to happen, start developing your course plan. And then not long after... He became publicly known as being one of the defendant or one of the defense lawyers for Trump's impeachment team. That was immediately rescinded because the school then allegedly rescinded their offer when they heard the news. Some saying the faculty and students would be uncomfortable. This is some perceived idea that people might be uncomfortable. So nobody was made uncomfortable. He didn't do anything wrong. So he gets to lose a job over that. I understand. Sean claims he was a victim of cancel culture, sure seems that way, and says liberalism used to favor the marketplace of ideas. Oh, it still does. There's just no S on the end of ideas anymore. It's just idea, and you have to adhere to it. So yeah, can you see the difference? Okay. Somebody who was nominated for a job made several public statements against people that she would be directly working with. And then on the other side, you have somebody who may or may not have made potentially some people uncomfortable. 
that's where we're at. That's the double standard. I think you guys can see it. And I hope there is a place for these two fine lawyers on the new populist side of the right aisle because they are great at what they do. And Schoen has an extensive history of being a great civil, civil rights lawyer. And they will be needed vociferously into the future. With that said, guys, I thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.